Welcome everybody. We're up at uh, a rather breezy dam. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the dam, the reservoir or anything because we're in Wales and <laughs> they, don't speak, they can't speak English here. So <laughs> insulting all my Welsh friends again. But this is the Black Mountains. It's sort of part of the kind of part of the Brecon Beacons. I think the Brecon Beacons are are over that way but this is part of the black mountain so we've just been walking up this valley here and we're basically just going to be heading up the valley i'm with uh, another friend james and we're going to find somewhere to camp at the top of the valley we've got a different pack this is an old pack i thought i'd try this just for a change i've used it a few times before um but I've never found it as, as good as the MLD ones, but I thought I'd give it a try for this one. It's a ULA circuit pack. Okay, well, we've walked along the reservoir there was probably a path just the other side of this um, uh, fence here that we should probably <laughs> should have gone up that way but talking weren't concentrating concentrating but while we're down here you can see there's one tent up there and then there's another tent there but you can see how low the water is coming down through there and how low the water is over there and just generally this whole valley seems to be several meters below you know what you would normally expect i can't and i think that's some rocks i wasn't sure if that was like a little in fact that there is a horse over there so there's one horse there's a little bothy over there and it looks like there's a few horses or ponies over there that seems a lot of people over there for that teeny weeny tent my guess is maybe they're the same gathering i don't know so it was getting a bit too tricky walking along here so we kind of decided that we had to go up this way and it looks like other people other people have probably done the same thing i think here and we're gonna clamber over the barbed wire but there's no barbed wire there so we can get lassie over that easily and then follow the path we're of course gonna go further up of the valley you know and get away from the the, the tourist department as it were okay well we're about three quarters ish up the valley and we've kind of found this rather nice place just below the path the path goes up over there and it's very breezy windy uh the forecast at the moment is 45 mile per hour winds up the top dropping down this evening but then picking up picking up later on or in the early hours of the morning so we found this spot here and this looks a very nice place we've got water flowing here and lassie is going absolutely bananas here but i just noticed that james is doing something interesting that some people might find helpful i've never done it and i've never seen it done before but put it's quite not a bad idea to be honest put a couple of poles down approximately where your sleeping quarters are going to be <laughs> and aim for that aim for, that. Aim for that. Don't get on a lump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got the the scap. Oh, hang on. Let's go and say. Let's go and because <laughs> obviously. Uh, drum boy and various other ones <laughs> the important bit is lassie so go and have a splash then lassie 
me and the camping and the tents are not really so important. Let's concentrate. Go on then. Go on then, you were in there a minute ago. Go on then, look at the state of you, you're soaking wet. We're going a bit further up here then, if you don't go in there. There you go. <laughs> You want to go in the baby steps now, do you? You're getting a bit older, so you want baby steps. Go on then, go another splash. <laughs> Let's see. Honestly, when I'm not filming you, then you're down here making a right. There you go. Go on then. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, anyway, so we'll <laughs> pop back up here again. Well, have a quick look around this. This is the SCARP 1. This is, I have mentioned in a previous video. This is not mine. I've, thank you, Lassie. I've borrowed this from uh, Chris Townsend. So this is about an 11 or 12 year old SCARP. And for people new to SCARP, you can see after 50 odd nights of use, from someone who actually gets out in their tent and uses it for quite a lot of camping. Let's see, quite a lot of camping. This is still in very, very good condition. And in fact, another thing that some of you might want to note, or you keep worrying about sealing tents. I definitely would be sealing your MLD things because they're single skin, but this, Scat, Chris has not sealed it. There's no, there's no glue. There's nothing on this stitching at all. This one hasn't been sealed at all. And there's nothing on the inside. He, I, I know he hasn't sealed it, but you can just uh, have a look around and you can see there's no seam sealing on that at all. So. Rather than you all worrying and stressing over your sealing your tents and everything, you don't necessarily, you know, have to worry about it. But then I guess most of the seams are kind of away from where you would be, you know, anyway. They're kind of like on the edges. And then we'll have a look inside. We've done a video on this already, but the ground sheet looks in excellent condition still. Well, good morning, everybody. It's around about, uh, it's nearly half past 10. So we've been awake uh, not very long, about 25 uh, minutes. We obviously got into camp last night uh, I don't know what time it was, about 3, 3.30, something like that. And we were, we set up camp and then we basically just chilled out and for a few minutes and then the weather kind of turned in on us a little bit. It got a bit uh, drizzly, so we kind of, probably about four o'clock, just basically just <laughs> ducked, ducked under cover pretty quickly and have pretty much remained under cover, you know, <laughs> Undercover sounds like something out of James Bond. Um, and we pretty much be this Agent Tony and his double O echo for that. Um, and we've been, um, you know, undercover ever since. Lassie slept that side, uh, although I don't quite know where she is at this moment in time. Probably annoying James, I expect. Um, Somehow she knocked my drone. <laughs> Luckily, it's in a waterproof bag, uh, but somehow uh, she knocked that outside. I'm not sure what else she's knocked outside, to be honest. It's my. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well done, Lassie. <laughs> oh, God. She's knocked my waterproof hat outside. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lassie. Oh, uh, so that's my waterproof hat that's now soaked. <laughs> oh, well done, Nancy. <laughs> Trust you to try and test stuff out. You don't, you don't need me uh, testing stuff. So send, send Lassie along to just test, test stuff. Anyway, hopefully that 
hopefully that will dry out a bit. Good job it didn't blow away. We're in camp, as you can see, we've brought the we've brought the scat with us. It's quite windy. I've set the anometer. That's a clever word, isn't it? Out just to you know see how breezy and windy it is out there. Uh, it's been quite a blustery, not a very nice, not a very nice night. But we have been very comfortable and cosy in here. I've just pegged it out. Two pegs at the back, two at the side, and two at the front. And that's it. And it's been fine. I, I thought, <laughs> given all the fun and games that people have been have, having pegging this thing out for within an inch of its life, I thought it'd be interesting just to peg it out as is. Apart from the fact, as I've mentioned, this is Chris Townsend's version. And we don't have the little straps on it because he's taken them off. <laughs> he obviously took them off for a reason, let's face it. Um, and I know I didn't bother hooking up this, the walking pole system over and it stood up fine. I don't know what it is with mine, why mine slips, but I asked James, he's got one of these and he said his lines have never slipped. I don't think these lines are slipping from what I can tell. So I still think it's worth switching them out for thicker lines to be on the safe side, but well, maybe a small tip for you. You know that center pole at the back there? Well, if you angle that inwards a little bit, so rather than having it straight down flush with the fly on the outside, if you and you can do it from in here, it's easy to reach. If you pull it towards the inner, because some, some of you out there are, <laughs> well, maybe you're not the people following me, but people who are on the groups are constantly complaining about getting a damp sleeping bag. Well, you know, there's nothing damp on, on here. So I don't know what some of you lot are doing to get damp sleeping bags, but anyway, um, that pole, if you angle it forward, then that might just help keep the outer and the inner you know, separate, I'll give you a little don't bit more. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, subscribe now. <laughs> minute. <laughs> right now, this absolute minute, subscribe right now. Is that Mark? Is Mark just being sort of emailing you and telling you, yeah. James, Mark, James, this is Mark. Tony's been talking for more than two minutes yeah, and he still hasn't told everybody to subscribe yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you might find that that useful there. Um, but we've been very well protected in here. It's been fine. I think just maybe not to pitch it out to within an inch of its life with crossing poles and, uh, and everything else. And you might actually get a bit further with this thing than, <laughs> than any. Anyway, the one thing that I did make a slight mistake on, and it doesn't matter because it hasn't really come in, but I did open that vent there, plus this vent here. And obviously because the wind is blowing this way, then obviously, we, uh, you know, rain has been blowing into the vent. So this, the inner part of the fly here, as you can see, has got damp. And you probably can't see it now, but there were about three or four drops on the sleeping bag. Uh, but you know, the, they, I can't even see them now. You know, it probably is worthwhile doing up the, the prevailing wind direction vent. Um, I opened them last night because it wasn't raining uh, and then I didn't close them. But you probably could actually stretch your arm underneath without going outside and close it up. But I'll leave it open. It's, it's fine. I don't think any harm's going to come to it. Yeah, we've had tea. I brought the... Ooh, I brought this pillow with me. I've gone back to this one. It's a little bit you know, it's not exactly heavy, but uh, you know, it's it's a it's, it's a comfort expat pillow. I think it's got down in it. I think I brought this one primarily because the one that I used last time, I've put it somewhere, and I don't know where I've put it. I've I've looked here and I've looked there and I've looked everywhere, and I cannot I can't find it. 
which is uh, really annoying. So I remembered I had this one and I can't be without a pillow. I brought the x boil again just to give it a try without frying, just, um, you know, for boiling water and what have you. I can't say for absolute sure, but I do think that it uses, it's definitely using more fuel. Um, so I only drank tea last night and I had a cup of soup and I've not had breakfast yet. And normally a pot of like this would do, and it would do a dinner, which I didn't bother doing last night. I just had crackers and cheese. And I've only got this much left, so that's got to do breakfast and at least a couple more teas. So it's quite probable that on this occasion, you know, I will break into my into my other bottle, which normally I wouldn't be starting until the next, you know, until the evening, as it were. So it does, it definitely does seem to use more fuel, but I it's difficult to know how much more fuel, but maybe like 15 percent more 15 10 20 percent more it's difficult to say really it's definitely using it's definitely using a little bit more bear that in mind that you just need to bring a little bit more but it's 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 working fine oh it's quite definitely quite breezy out there i'm going to make another cup of tea and i will catch you all a little bit later on all right well this is the you know the next morning we're walking up the valley we've we packed everything up it was pretty windy and and not the nicest of weather so i just got everything packed up but we're crossing uh the valley here we crossed the water the river here lassie is <laughs> obviously found water down there to uh i swear she must be part hippopotamus <laughs> i think you're part hippopotamus lassie so we're making our way up the valley up here. There's about one kilometer maximum to the top of the valley. And then we're gonna swing around that side across the top. We've checked the forecast and it looks windy, but not excessively so, sort of 20 to 36 mile per hour. So we're gonna kind of decide, you know, once we get up there, what it's, what it's like. We'd like a view if possible. And then we'll make our way across the top that way and then drop into the shoulders or the valleys and try and find somewhere to camp. So it's coming up to two o'clock, you know, at the moment. And the rain once again is coming in. It was supposed to have cleared up. The forecast originally was for clear yesterday, but the new forecast, because we've got a signal now um, it's just for 20 30 percent chance of rain well we're definitely getting more than more than that percentages of rain anyway we're gonna carry on up and try and keep walking and keep warm and we'll get lassie out of that water and get going so well, we're walking across the top you've got a, a few down the valleys and it's very very breezy up here to say the least probably about maybe 30 miles an hour maybe to be honest it's usually higher than we think it is but it is it is blowing us it's not knocking us off our feet but it is definitely on the on the breezy side. Can I see? We've got a couple of other people walking towards us with their with their dog. So we're probably going to head for not this outcrop, probably not the next outcrop, but probably the one after that. It's about maybe 
three kilometers i think the path is going to be like this most of the way it looks pretty easy going messy come on just windy so we're gonna just keep going and just see how it how it gets on really <laughs> The main thing is to find somewhere a little bit sheltered, but the wind is supposed to drop a little bit later and a bit less in the morning. So I think this is probably the worst of the wind. And the valley seems to be clearing. It was very misty and foggy earlier, but you can now at least see into the valleys over there. You can see the you can see the cloud and the mist whipping along there. We're at about 720 meters here. So we're higher here than the than Kinder Scout, which is like 600 and something. And the highest part up ahead is around about 800 meters hopefully you can hear me we have the wind measuring device we're at 775 meters and you can see it's gusting up to 32 there Hopefully you saw a 32. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Thirty-five and a half. <laughs> That's a consistent speed of knocking on the door of 30. That is pretty pretty windy that the temperature is six degrees and the wind chill there is minus a half so that is uh, minus almost minus minus one wind chill 32 speed minus one wind chill minus one it's almost enough to take you off your feet it's very 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 breezy it's uh it's difficult to stay you can stand and you can walk but it, oh, <laughs> until you trip over something but yeah that's uh so that's gusting up to 30 35 miles per hour and that's on a kestrel not some cheap chinese knockoff thing that probably isn't that accurate we're about 800 meters the very top is just over there but uh we're crossing in this direction we're just following the gps as well we've got the maps with us but we're just using the gps for convenience as well but we're going to try and find somewhere to camp that's kind of the plan is to drop down the side a little bit we'll head, uh, head that so we're way. heading that way so we're heading in that direction. We're going to follow Lassie in that direction. See where she takes we'll see, see where Lassie decides she wants to. Because <laughs> she'll probably pitch in the wettest, boggiest part possible. <laughs> and say so this is a good spot. <laughs> oh, there's a good spot there for one tent. Yeah, that's true. Yes. 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 Right there. Yeah. So we're crossing all this stuff here which is quite good yeah there's some flattish bits around here Oop. oh god i'm falling over i'm drunk it's always that thing of trying to find uh, things 
Okay, so we're walking down this way. There's some water down here. So we're going to head down. Let's see. So we're going to head down to the water. And we're just going to see what the what it's like down there whether it's flatter uh, less windy you can see the wind is coming across there you can see the cloud blowing from right to left quite quickly over there but it's it's quite reasonably sheltered <laughs> reasonably sheltered here okay well we found water and basically what we're going to do is we're going to fill up with water here and then camp is just over there. Luckily, when we were crossing over there, we found a fairly flat area. So we're just going to take packs off, fill up here. We're just trying to keep Lassie, Lassie. Lassie. We're just trying to keep Lassie below this little bit here, because then we can simply put bottles under there and fill up there. So we're just trying to tell Lassie that she's got literally the entire valley <laughs> you've got the entire valley that you can use lassie just not that little bit there just leave that bit there you can see that the the national park people or the park people or whoever they are people are obviously doing something up here so anyway we're just going to get some water and then we're gonna head over to camp. The forecast hasn't quite been as forecast. It's supposed to clear up a little bit, but maybe later on. It did say 20% chance of rain, so clearly we're still getting that 20% uh, bit of rain at the moment, and then it's supposed to clear up later. But where camp is, which is just over there, um, and like I said, luckily James geotagged it on his phone so we can head over, you know, in that, in that direction. And it's, it looks reasonable. It's kind of high up, but it's oh. just the other side. Oh, it's a little bit, uh, like a li little bit PT. <laughs> please do be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button to all. And please be sure to return for the evening's camp.